All right, all right, all right. Good afternoon, everybody. Ho- happy Thursday. Um, hope you're having good weather wherever you are, whether it be uh, cold or lukewarm. Hopefully it's a nice sunny day. I don't know. Feeling optimistic today, everyone. So uh, <laughs> my name is Rob Romanofsky. I'm the uh, Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And today we have Cody Wiltrout from PTC, who is going to give us a review and a uh, brief demonstration of the uh, Creo Flow analysis product from PTC. Um, this, this is really a tremendous CFD solution. Um, we formerly, as a company, 3HTI, um, sold the Mentor Flow EFD uh, solution. And one of the one of the problems with the mentor solution was that there was it was just one solution. There wasn't any variations. So what's great about the Creo Flow suite is that there's three different solutions based on what you needed to do. So you don't have to, um, you know, pay more money than necessary if you don't need the level of sophistication that the higher end package provides. And I'll also say that um, the higher end package is. Um, probably a little better than what we were selling with Mentor Flow EFD. Uh, we have a resonant um, expert in fine and element analysis and CFD. His name is Bill Stickney. Bill was not available for the call today. Um, but if there's any questions or um, you want to know, have a, issues that you want to solve using CFD, um, I mean, we're, we're a premier partner for you, potential premier partner for you in assisting you with your uh, FEA and CFD needs. Uh, we've done it for some, some top name companies um, and Bill is, Bill is just tremendous at you know, being able to uh, just assist in these areas. So without further ado, I'm gonna, I have Cody, I passed him the power already. So I'm gonna have him get started with his, um, with the presentation. We should be about maybe 20 minutes today. If you have any questions, please put those into the chat box and we will try to answer them as we go. And so Cody, without further ado, take it away. Thank you very much, Rob. It's nice to be here with all of you today. As mentioned, I'm with PTC here. I'm a solutions consultant. I was brought into the call today to take us through an overview of the Creo flow analysis and some of the package uh, differences there. So I'll start off with a brief introductory PowerPoint and we can take a look at the tool. So really why PTC decided to partner with Samerix to embed some of their capability inside of Creo is that engineers often don't have training in CFD analysis. And if you're using a third party tool, it might be expensive and getting you know, data back and forth can be hard. So then you end up with this being done late stage in the design process, but that means you're only using it for validation. You can't really get any improvement out of it. And you can end up relying on physical prototypes, which if they fail means you have to go back, do redesign, build another physical prototype, which can be both expensive and very time consuming. And that means that you end up with delayed and over budget projects. And that's why PTC partnered with Samerix to embed their capabilities into Creo so that designers could start using Creo flow analysis earlier in the process, get better feedback and help them to rely less on those physical prototypes. So what this is gonna give you is an ease of use for engineers, not just specialists. So you don't have to be a specialist to be able to utilize this tool. And this has a seamless workflow between your CAD and your CFD, where CFD is part of the design. So you don't have to worry about taking the model, exporting it out, bringing it into other tools, anything like that. It's gonna be all built into Creo. And it has a very easy setup for your model as well as mesh generation. So all of that, again, you don't have to be an expert to be able to do. And then the simulation is very fast and gives you quick turnaround times on that so that you can review the results and start making improvements to your designs. There's also a lot of different ways to interpret and consume those results from looking at plots to being able to view things on services, being able to create sections. And we'll go through some of that during our demonstration here as well. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the tool and what it can do. So starting off here, I'm gonna be utilizing this inverter box and I'm just gonna come into my applications and into flow here and say, I wanna create a new project and start by creating my flow domain. So I'm just gonna select the two sides that the flow can go through in this box in this inverter. 
and it'll identify all of the holes that are going through there. Now you might want to check if there's any holes that you don't want uh, fluid to be flowing through. In our case, like we have that power switch there, we can select those and remove them. So it realizes that there shouldn't be anything going through there. But if we turn off our CAD body, we can now see that we have our fluid body here, but not all of that is you know, open for fluid to be flowing through. So we can add in solid components and we can do that directly from our model tree. So again, really easily being able to utilize the CAD side here, we can just say, hey, these are all solid components. So remove anything from there being, uh, you know, fluid flowing through those. Next, we're going to choose our fluid uh, modules, our physics modules here. And this gets a little bit into what Rob mentioned with the different capabilities in terms of packages. And I'll touch on the kind of split between those at the end of our demonstration. But starting off, you're just gonna choose what types of uh, physics you want to use during your simulation uh, based on the ones that you have available to you. And we're gonna look at flow, turbulence, heat, and streamlines for today. Then we can apply any materials that might be important for our simulation. In our case, we're gonna be uh, looking at a thermal chip that's gonna be generating our heat and we're gonna assign it a material for that purpose. Now that we have our chip set with a material, we want it to be what's generating our heat. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this is a heat source and we're going to give it a value in watts of what the heat generation it's gonna be making is. And we can add in uh, any min maxes, anything like that, that we might want to be able to graph as well. So in this case, we're gonna graph the temperature around that chip as it's going through uh, our simulation here. Now that we have the heat set up, the next thing we need to do is look at how we're actually gonna set up our flow. So setting up our boundary conditions. For our first boundary condition, we're gonna say that there's just gonna be a pressure inlet. So there's no forced flow here. It's just going through uh, based on the pressure. And then on the other side where we have this fan, we're gonna set a volumetric flux to represent the airspeed that the fan is pushing at and uh, set the value for that based on the speed of that fan. Next, we'll generate our mesh, and you can see that you don't really have to do much for that. It'll go through and do it automatically for you. And if we turn off our flow body, we can actually take a look at that mesh that it's generating. Now, if you do wanna get specific with the mesh, you can edit it, but it is going to give you the capability to just have it auto-generate a mesh. And you can see that it's a pretty good mesh refinement and it knows to make you know refined meshes on some of those edges there versus in the flat spaces where it can be a little bit more simplified. But again, you can always adjust that as you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and say run and start looking at the temperature on our uh, plot there for that thermal chip. And we can see it spikes up to around 400 and then sets out at you know around 350-ish, somewhere in there. We can also look at our streamlines coming through the model itself. So we can see the flow uh, going through our inverter here. We've got pretty strong streamlines through the center, but we're getting some loss on the upper side, especially and a little bit on the lower side there. And maybe we'd like this temperature to get a little bit lower than it is currently. That's a little bit too high for uh, where we want it to be for our chip. Well, that's fine. We can start with making maybe a change here inside of uh, you know the flow tool where I might say, we're going to go ahead and increase uh, the volumetric flux. But before we do that, I wanna take a look at what exactly is going on. So we've seen the streamlines and seen the way that the flow is going through there, but I wanna take a deeper look at the heat distribution across this. So I'm going to take and apply to these services, the temperature. Now I can quickly identify and see, okay, here's where all our heat is coming from, clearly on the chip there, and it's mostly staying there. There's not a lot of distribution across the rest of the base there. But we could also do a section to see how it's going through up into the air. And we can see that we're getting a little bit of backdraft there uh, in the center, so we might want to have a stronger flow to address that. We could also do a uh, ISO surface, so if we would say we have a set temperature that we want to see uh, anything under that, we can adjust that and see as the temperature gets higher, the smaller the volume there that's encompassed by that temperature. So there's a lot of ways to interact with this and be able to look at those results. Now that I'm aware of what's going on, I'm gonna say we can put a slightly stronger fan in here. We're gonna increase our flow rate and we'll run this again. So now that we're gonna go through and uh, start running this again, we'll see the temperature uh, adjusting based off of those changes that we've made. Uh, we can see that we've dropped down from that 400 to you know, a little bit lower there, around 360, maybe 370. Temperature is dropping out here 
around 330, maybe a little bit under 330. So we've dropped it considerably just from that. And we can see that from the streamlines, we're getting a much more uh, solid flow through the center there. We're still losing a few streams in that backdraft, but overall uh, we're seeing some solid improvement. Now, from this point, I might say I'd still like to be able to get it lower if possible. You know, this is an improvement certainly, but it's still a little bit warmer than I'd like. Well, I can't put a stronger fan in. There's no stronger fan that's gonna fit into there. So we need to go back to, you know, how can we adjust the design? That's fine because I'm inside of Creo. It's very easy for me to transition from the simulation side back to the CAD side and say, I want to increase the number of cuts, allow for more airflow to come through on this side. So I'll just increase the number of instances in that pattern that we have. And I'm gonna do that for both the left-hand side and the ones right below our switches here. And once I've increased the pattern for these cuts, I can go right back into the simulation and see what effect that's gonna have. So you can see that this really makes a smooth workflow working between the two tools. You're always inside of Creo. You don't have to push models back and forth. Whenever there are changes, you can update your project to match that without having to go through and redo everything from scratch. So in this case, the only thing really that we need to update is say, hey, there's some new holes that the airflow is gonna be coming through. So recognize those three new cuts and we're gonna utilize those to allow airflow through here. So now that we have those new cuts inside of there, we already have uh, everything else really set up the same uh, that it was before. We still have the same for the chip and everything going the same way. So we'll say we're ready to go and run this again. And now we're just under 360 for our max temperature. And again, settling out a little bit below 330 there for our steady state temperature. Uh, so that's going to really allow us to work through this process very quickly and easily. You can see that it's a very simple setup. You don't have to be an expert to be able to utilize this tool. You can come in and you know set your boundary conditions pretty clearly and easily. The meshing can be done automatically. You've got a lot of ways to really interpret the data that you're getting back, whether it be with something like the plot that I set up or visualizing it directly on the model, either through a surface, one of those ISO services, or even through a plane to identify what's going on. And in our example today, I was showing some heat, but you can always look at a flow velocity and things of that nature as well. Uh, we already saw the streamlines. You could just adjust that to show what is the actual velocity for the flow through there. If you were using a maybe water or something like that for a coolant or going through pipes, things of that nature. And all that setup is gonna be very similar. You're just gonna have slightly different options in the physics and then you know slightly uh, different options whenever you choose to display your results and how you want those to be coming through. So with that in mind, what I hope you're all uh, able to see today is that this really does allow you to gain analysis-driven design as opposed to having to rely on those physical prototypes. Rather than making an inverter box and testing it out and seeing if the chip overheats, we are able to very quickly identify that, hey, we are too high uh, temperature wise and we need to make some adjustments and seeing that maybe just the fan adjustment isn't going to be enough. So we need to actually get back to some of the basic modeling there and make some adjustments to the CAD. And this is going to allow you to reduce cost as well as your time to market by reducing those cycle times and not relying on those physical prototypes and increase product quality and innovation. Once you start being able to utilize the analysis, you can really improve your designs and look at options that you might not have in the past. And even if you were doing some of this in the past, but sending it out to experts who are using some other tool, this is gonna improve your turnaround time because you're not having to wait and send things back and forth. You don't have to worry about any of those translation errors and wait on other users. You can do it all yourself inside of Creo. Uh, so just to touch on the packages here uh, that were mentioned at the beginning of the call, you can see here that this splits into the three sections as Rob mentioned. And on the left, we start with the Creo flow analysis. And this is gonna really cover your basic simulation flows, heat transfer, as well as turbulence. Now, if you need to get into things like particles, radiation, or moving and sliding meshes, then that's when you're gonna move into the analysis plus. And if you really need to get into things like cavitation, so if there's gonna be any bubbling uh, due to the motion, multi-phase liquids or multi-components as well as dynamics, that's when you're gonna go all the way to the CreoFlow Analysis Premium. So this gives you really options based on what you're gonna be doing. Maybe for your team, you only need to do the basic analysis and then you might still be doing someone uh, using someone else to do the final 
uh, analysis if you're using this early in the process, or maybe you do want to go all the way, but you don't need to be able to do dynamics or cavitation. Whatever it is, we can work with you to figure out what the best package for your team would be and what capabilities you would need. Uh, one thing that I will also note is that with us partnering with Samerix, they have a lot of examples on their website of different types of flow simulation that they can do. You can see a few there on the right where you might have uh, water splashing when you have gears running, uh, planning hall moving over liquid, uh, centrifugal pump, all of that type of stuff. And you can go to their website on Samerix and see uh, examples of what the tool can do. And uh, Creo is gonna allow you to do all that same capability, but built into Creo. So again, you don't have to worry about passing things back and forth or have any translation issues or even really managing two softwares. It's all just gonna be built into Creo there. Uh, so with that, I will uh, take a pause here and see if there are any questions and if not, pass it off to you, Rob, for any final comments. All right, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> I think that, you know, that the last, uh, the last, uh, whatchamacallit, um, um, point that you made about it, about the uh, software being embedded. I mean, that's, that's major. I mean, because a lot of, um, a lot of softwares, um, you have to, you have to extract a CAD file and then upload it into the, um, the third party CAD tool. That's always um, tricky because you could lose data. You have to rework the model when it's done. Um, also, the, the the good thing about using this in Creo, especially if there's a there's a uh, um, solution within Creo in the base package called flexible modeling. If you guys aren't familiar with flexible modeling, email me. Um, we'll we'll give you some more information, especially if you're a Creo user. Um, if you're a customer, we we give two hours of free desk side coaching, so we'll help you out for two hours just to use Creo better. That's what we do for our customers. Um, but if you don't know about flexible modeling, let me know because I need to help you help you get educated there because what flexible modeling does is it will quickly de-feature your parts that might need to go into a flow analysis or for um, any other type of analysis that you may be running on that part. It will de-feature it pretty quickly and then you know add the features back just as quickly after you're done running the analysis. That is a tremendous tool. And something that, that y'all may not know is that Creo files are about one-third smaller, one-third smaller than SOLIDWORKS and Autodesk files. So Autodesk and SOLIDWORKS have a lot of these files within that CAD file, these associated files that um, make that make those files much larger, make it a lot more challenging to make changes in late-stage designs. Um, but with flexible modeling, that that's done a lot quicker, easier because the files are a lot smaller, and also it helps to uh, make analysis a lot easier when using products like Creo Flow. So I just wanted to add that point real quick. If you have any questions, um, uh, somebody asked about noise, multi-fluid environment. Uh, so, you can do. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no. You could, I was just um, going to say, you, you can do multi-fluid, but that would be in the, the higher end package there, if you're going to be doing that. So that would be something like air and water. Uh, I don't understand the question about noise. Yeah, I'm not certain what that's in reference to. All right. If 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 you want to detail your your question a little more, um, and noise in uh, DB when it flows through heat sinks. Um, I'm not particularly positive on that. Uh, I don't know, Rob. If maybe you could run that by your simulator. Your, uh, CFA expert and see. Yeah, I can. I can run it by Bill. I don't know how you would measure. Um, I don't know how you would measure decibels through um, through a flow analysis. I'll talk to Bill about that. That you might need an you might need an additional tool to be able to do that. Um, 
and that may be something that does um, nonlinear uh, nonlinear FEA. But there's there's three ways that you can go about flow analysis or any other type of analysis. One, you can buy the software. Um, actually, there's two. One, you can buy the software. You can do it yourself. Two, you can outsource it. Actually, there are three. And the third one is you can outsource it like with us. And then what we can do is, because there's a lot of companies that we work with that are already outsourcing this, but they don't do it that frequently. And now things are starting to pick up where they want to do it more frequently, but they're not really, they don't understand how to use the tool. And we're in a position where we can not only run the analysis for them as a, as a partner, um, and get them the results, but we can come alongside your people that are going to use this and get them trained up specifically on that project that they're doing so they know how to use the tool. And then you can determine, does it make sense to purchase this product um, or should we continue to work with 3HTI with three um, to outsource this for our company? And then when it gets to a point that it's more frequent, then to go ahead and buy the, uh, buy the software. Because what our goal is, the software is great, but you got to know how to use it and you have to use it often. And that's where we come in, where we um, educate our customers to be able to use the software proficiently and quickly. Because if you make an investment, you want to get that return and people using it um, as quickly as possible, using it efficiently. So that's, that's what our focus is. So if you have any other questions, and I'll get back to you with that question on um, noise and decibels for, uh, for analysis. But if you have any other questions or need anything, you can just respond to the uh, email that I sent out regarding this webinar. Um, it'll come directly to me and we're more than happy to uh, do a more detailed demo if, if necessary. So Cody, great job. And you know, thanks for uh, doing the demo today. And, Thank you to, for, to our audience for uh, participating and being on. And next week, uh, we're going to go into, we're going to continue the theme of analysis. We're going to have a webinar regarding Creo Simulate and Creo Simulate Advanced to uh, discuss those FEA tools. So thanks everybody for being on and hopefully we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone.